that we're not getting the frequency side to side anymore. And we're trying to rely on things like walking or running in order to get that frequency of cycling. And we're not exposing ourselves to the range that it actually has access to. So anyway, getting back to the integrity of this man, we were able to put together. He, he, he took WEC method and he filled it in with a cohesive sort of, okay, we have a lexicon. It's super simple. We master one side, a coil. We mm -hmm. master the other side, a coil, right? We understand how to harness the power of bilateral torsion. So we're, we're less thinking flexion extension than global rotation and spiraling mm -hmm. that creates a torsional effect. And then we put it all together with rotational movement training where it's any and all combinations of those things. And if you establish this base, literally everything gets better. Mm -hmm. And so we could take anybody and we could say, all right, well, do these things and now measure what you do, Yeah. right? Measure what you do. Because in order for me to squat the most, right? I need to learn how to pack everything in, right? Yes. Pack and pack it in, create that pressure. But if I only pack bilaterally, well, I'm missing out on those millimeters that matter if I can go unilateral here like that mm -hmm. and then get it on that. Oh, now I got just that little bit more. Yeah. And that little bit more makes all the difference. Can you guys explain the concept of coiling? Because like uh, you talked about how beneficial that was for you on day one of understanding it. And when you taught that to me today and even Mark, like got into that position, I was like, fuck, like there's... I was cramping up because I've never been in those positions before. But one thing is, as people do the things that we'll have on video soon, they're going to have the same reaction. Like they'll mm -hmm. cramp up. They'll be like, oh, this isn't a good place for me to be. But over time, when you get used to those positions, they are not as, they don't feel as trippy. They don't feel as crampy. So can you explain that concept to us so we can understand what coiling sure. is and does? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the idea in simple terms, uh, it's this idea of like a proximal side bend. So if I cut my arms and my legs off, we're looking at the shoulder <clears throat> and the hip. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to close the gap or I'll show here like right shoulder to right hip. And if I can maintain that and maintain that proximal side bend, that's the coil. And right? it's not just a side bend like yeah. right, right, And right. then the, the thing that makes it honed a little more and where you start getting that more advanced feeling yes. that most people probably won't actually feel if they're going to watch something and just try it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. They're not going to find it. And they don't have that hands on yet is that we start having the external cues. What are we trying to direct all of this intent to? And that's where things start shifting. The eyes start going in certain positions, and then I start to get a deeper feeling or sensation in that side bend, right? And, and, and what I would say for, for, the, geeky, for the geeky people yeah. out there, like myself, who likes geeky stuff, you have a man named Grakovetsky, mm -hmm. who basically defined a spinal engine. So if we're going to look at the evolution of movement for the vertebrae animals, right? The, the, vertebra the vertebrates, right? Mm. So it starts Piscean. You're in fluid, you're a fish, and all you do is side bend, right? That's all mm. you do. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as you come out of that buoyant medium and you're an amphibian or a reptile, you got to prop yourself up. And the, the amphibian reptile has that lateralization. They're not sagittal like a mammal, so they're here. And now I'm still operating on this, but because I have to prop myself up, now there becomes this figure eight where the coil is the shoulder come down and back, commensurate with the hip coming up and forward with a central axis that doesn't change. Mm -hmm. So it's this martial principle of move without moving so that I'm most economical because in nature, economy means you pass on your genes yeah. right non-economy means you don't if you can envision like a pitcher or something like that that's exactly yes. what you're talking about correct right? correct they're raising one side lowering the other side driving in yes. internally rotating the hip and putting their entire body weight and then it's all the way through to like a follow-through yes yeah, exactly right? exactly and we say that the the basic underlying functions that underlie everything is the locomotive function the swinging function, the throwing and catching function, mm -hmm. because that's most necessary for survival if we're just going to go back to the most basic things. Mm -hmm. I want to get into that. So, so we were, he's talking like spinal engine theory, this idea of going side to side. And a lot of what we're doing in the gym now, the training environment, there's so much center, so much bilateral in yes. our language, right? Pack Project family, how's it going? I want to tell you guys about the legendary Tasty Pastry. And we've talked about Ben and Jerry's and snacks and stuff on the podcast. But those can go against your goals. They can be too calorically dense and they can really make you crave more bad foods. But the crazy, the crazy thing about the legendary Tasty Pastry is that it's 20 
grams of protein and five grams of net carbs and 180 calories. And they taste amazing. You guys need to check them out. They have tons of flavors. Andrew, how can they get it? Yeah. And the other thing, they pass the kid test. Kids love these things as mm. well. Head over to eatlegendary.com and at checkout, enter promo code Power Project to save 20% off all the tasty pastries, all the nut butters, all the almonds, everything. Again, eatlegendary.com. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's get back to the podcast. That we're not getting the frequencies side to side anymore. And we're trying to rely on things like walking or running in order to get that frequency of cycling. And we're not exposing ourselves to the range that it actually has access to. So that idea, our foundation or coiling core, it's teaching us to create like isometric holds here to develop a position or posture and understand that that's a safe place to be yeah. and develop an awareness of it. So that now when I go for my 30 minute jog, I'm tapping a little more range and I'm getting better and better reps every time. So that, that's the big thing we're doing is we're, we're creating frequency in a new range of motion. We're just exposing a range of motion. We're giving it external intent so that it's driven to something. And now we can get volume in it. And then it's just normalized. It's and, the same thing. And it's the fundamental of balance. <clears throat> a balanced system mm -hmm. is right now ready. And you don't have hot spots in a balanced system, right? Everything is operating in proportion as it should, as it must to optimize if you have the balance. I mean, you're ready to go at all times pretty much. You're, Deion Sanders, cheated on stretch, yep. right? Yeah. You, you know, it, 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 yeah, he supposedly you, showed up to the NFL combine, which I think was different back then, but supposedly he was in a track suit and they're like, you're up. And he's like, okay. And he just, yeah, four one he, something. Yeah, like and it he was just like a walked out the door. That, yeah, that's the yeah, 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 that's yeah. the legend right there. But yeah. Actually, this morning, like we just come in and we all sort of like just started going ham on yeah. everything. But you kind of there was a moment you mentioned something, and then I think we kind of got separated before we got there. But you were you were talking about like warming up or prep or I think something like mm -hmm. that. You may ask a question on that and. I've oh, yeah, just said uh, stiffness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stiffness. We started talking about something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was kind of like... A lot of people my age, like, they, they go to get up, and even even some family members and some people that are uh, even a little older than me, but they'll kind of get up, and it takes them a second to kind of get out of that uh, kind of stuck position. They're kind of bent forward, mm -hmm. and then, then they're okay, and then they can kind of move around. But even... Uh, Stan Efferding, who we had here a while back, he was kind of in awe of Dr. Sean Baker, who we had here. Oh, yeah. And he I was like, yeah. Sean, like, you don't, because they're the same age, they're both like 53. He's like, Sean, you're not like stiff after sitting down for a while or after because we trained and then we sat and we did a podcast type thing. And he's like, no, man, I feel great. And so, I, you know, I just started thinking about it more because I've had that stiffness before. And I'm starting to get further and further away from it. Mm -hmm. And see, that that's what I was saying was when I first met him, I kind of was doing all that stuff in the center. I was working one torsion line. I was doing a lot of gymnastics, a lot of kettlebell, a lot of lifting. And it really amplifies one side of it. And I wasn't practicing the side bending, right? And it was I was just starting to kind of get that little bit of stiffness. And I'm not even 30 yet. So I'm going, what is this ain't right? Something's <laughs> not right, right? Um, but what happens now is that this position, understand this, getting this feeling, it sort of gives you this ability to body scan really quickly. So like we do this all the time. This is something I know you do all the time. And it's like, I'm in the grocery store line yeah. and I'm just chilling and I'm standing here a little longer and I want to stand on a hard surface and I can just do a quick like, oh, like, I'm here. I'm, I could, if something happened right now, I could get up and go. I know it's funny. I like could it. do airport karate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I can do a quick check in and go, like, everything's all right and I'm capable right now. I don't got to warm up and stretch and do all this stuff that's not realistic in a real situation. Right. And I'm capable. You know what I mean? If I'm going to go for whatever, I might prep for it a different way. Or if I do the body scan and it's telling me I'm not ready, then I'm not ready. You know what I mean? And I think that giving people some ownership over their own bodies and like giving them tools to actually like feel something in themselves to like, like say, Hey, I'm good. And not say you have to do this all we're, the time. We're so Pat Roger family, I hope you enjoyed this clip. We are on discord and Reddit. We're trying to talk to you guys and build a community down there. So the links are in the bio, but remember like comment, subscribe, share this out with people so you can share the wealth of health as cheesy as that fucking sounds. Peace.